And so the Lord so fit that this meeting what were to happen tonight. Like I said, no live stream. You can send that little, y'all can send that little messages, give them a little taste of what's going on. But when y'all leave here tonight, the download and the information that you're going to receive. You've been ordered by the Holy Spirit to begin to launch this new era within the body of Christ tonight from what God is getting ready to release through this woman of God. I love her. She could be a million places tonight. People are calling her all over this world. Still. For those of y'all that don't know that. Mm -hmm. But thank God she's so fit to be with us tonight. Richmond, Virginia, aren't we happy to have her tonight? Do me a favor, I want to move out of your way. I want to move out her way and I want to give her an opportunity to share with what the Lord has released her to give to us and deposit to us tonight. Put your hands together. Let's receive Dr. Juanita Byron. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everybody praise the Lord. God is a good God, isn't he? Why don't we just put our hands together and bless his name for just a second. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I know you can do better than that. While you're clapping those hands, open up your mouth and give God praise. We bless your name, Jesus. Thank you, God. I'm, while you're standing, I'm just going to keep myself from going too fast and overboard tonight. But I honor the Lord for his goodness and his mercy. I honor the Lord for my son and my daughter. I can say that legitimately, that they are truly from my loins from many years ago in 5 a.m. prayer. I still can see Medina with that ponytail and her 5 a.m. prayer t-shirt on going across the floor. And then the beginnings, Orrin would look at her like, is it really that serious? She would be all over the floor. And then after a while, here he comes. But I thank God that they were able to receive it and I'm here tonight because I love them dearly and I believe in them to be great men and women of God. Amen somebody. Amen somebody. To be young people that love the Lord the way that they do. And one thing I can appreciate about my children and I, I, I call them my children and I can say when people are my children and there are a lot of people that call me their mother but you know, y'all know how it is. People call you their mama, but all of them ain't your children. Amen, somebody. But um, they call me mother because my children are integral. And they're integral toward me. And they are, I'm an old school mama. And my kids do something, I say, did you do that? And they tell me, no, I say, don't you lie to me. So my kids don't lie to me. When I ask them if they did something, they say they didn't, that's the end of the story because I look them right in their face and I can see the spirit of truth. And that's why I thank God because Bishop Pullins and his wife are integral people and they love the Lord. Amen, somebody, they love the Lord. And while I'm standing, I just want you all to put your hands together for them because it's a rare thing, you don't know it yet. It's a rare thing for young people to love God and to have a prayer life like my daughter do. And to be on a phone at 5 o'clock in the morning every morning is commendable in this hour. It's commendable in this hour that a young woman would want to be on the phone at 5 a.m. every morning offering prayer up to the nation. That's something to go to God and give him thanks for. And to all, and I'm so proud of her that she has picked up at least that mantle from her mother, if nothing else, and it's the prayer mantle, and I was excited to hear her praying at 5 a.m. in the mornings on the phone. And I'm just so blessed and honored and 
probably soon she'll invite me to come on her call and do some 5 a.m. prayer. We'll probably be there till 2 o'clock in the morning from 5 a.m. But I honor them and I bless God for them. And to all of the pastors and the elders that are present tonight, all the teachers and evangelists, wherever you're sitting tonight, if you're not sitting up here, I honor the Lord for you tonight. And I know for a fact that it is the Lord that have brought you in this place and that you are chosen people that have been chosen by the Lord, as Pastor Pullins Bishop said, to carry on a newfound download that the Lord is about to release in this place. And I'm not going to get ahead of myself, so right before you take your seats, Father God, we bless you in the name of Jesus. We bless you for your goodness and your mercy. We bless you for your loving kindness. We thank you for all that you are doing and all that you have done. We ask him that you speak through these lips of clay. We ask him that you download what you are saying. Take my ears and stick them closer to your lips that I may be able to hear what your spirit is saying. Let me hear what your heart is moving into. Help me to download that to the people that you love. Your chosen people. The one that you're choosing out of the congregations of the dead. The ones that you have placed your hands upon and said to the devil, not them. The ones that you have declared that they will walk in the end time and the end time message and in the end time dimension of your will. And we thank you because you've chosen us and you've decreed and declared to the depths of hell that we shall not be lost and that we will not be wanderers in the church, but we will land in divine purpose and know what you are saying. And so God, I bless you for another opportunity to reveal your mysteries and your secrets to the people of God. I thank you for this divine gathering here tonight. I thank you because it was on the calendar before the foundations of the world was laid. I thank you because we didn't think this up and we didn't make it up. I thank you because not even the enemy has brought us together. But I thank you because this is your divine timing and your divine will. For us not only to be changed but to be transformed that we may become transformers of others. And so we thank you for this night. And we call it precious. And we don't take it for granted. And we don't take for granted that you have decided to have an audience with us. We don't take it for granted that you have decided to make yourself present to us. We don't take it for granted that as we talk to you, you're now going to talk back to us. We call it special. And we call it something that money came by. We call it something that the world cannot give us. We call it precious being that there are gray shades in the earth around. And the people are scrambling and don't know which way to go. And there are a lot of words that are being dispersed but they're not of you. There are a lot of scriptures that are being read but out of your timing. There are a lot of explanations about what is going on. But no revelation as to how we are to comprehend it. And so we thank you for your presence tonight. And we call you Jesus. And we call you our Lord and our Savior. And we thank you because after this night, we, all of us, shall never be the same. And let the people of God give God a praise if you believe that tonight. Yes, Lord. All you can do better than that, give him a real praise tonight. Thank you, Jesus. You may be seated in his presence. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I'm going to begin tonight from the book of Genesis, the fifth chapter and the 29th verse. Thank you. And I want you to, if you would tonight, to bear with me as much as you possibly can because tonight is a very profound night. And I say that because Though I am called upon quite often in the United States, mm -hmm. I have had the, the ability given to me by God to know when and where and what and not now. And so for that reason, I have been under the water for a reason. Because when the Lord gets ready to do something profound in the earth realm, 
he reaches and he gets the attention of the prophet. And not just from a place of prophesying things, prophesying houses and cars and different things of the sort, but being able to prophesy the times and where we are and what we should be doing and where we should be. And when I look at this scripture, and you will understand the depth of this scripture as I move into the word tonight. It says in the Amplified Bible, this one shall bring us relief and comfort from our work. Watch this. And the grievous toil of our hands due to the ground being cursed by the Lord. Somebody said, this one, this one. shall bring me relief. Oh, that's a powerful statement right there. If I don't say another word. That right there was enough to just say, this one shall bring me relief. The reason why I am going to take my time because I was sharing with my son and my daughter about the times that we are living in. And I said, I came tonight because they will understand the word as I begin to unfold what the Lord has given me. We are people of God, as you are hearing me, that we live in this world, but we are definitely not of this world. And I know we've heard that statement made many times before, that you're in the world, that we're in the world, but we're not of this world. But for some particular reason, the church has found itself in this world and of this world. And we are in this world and of this world because we have not understood a very important factor that I must bring to your attention. How did we become Christians? What is the nation of our Christianity? Where did it all come from? And when we recognize where our Christianity has come from, then we will understand why we are so far away from the timings of God. When you look at where we come from, Christianity was birthed out of Judaism. Out of Judaism, Jesus was a Jew. And Jesus practiced Judaism. And I want you to go with me with this because this is going to change your life when you hear this. He practiced Judaism. It's the reason why you saw him when the Bible talks about the woman touching the hem of his garment, that wasn't the hem of a skirt or the hem of a dress. That was the strings that hung from the prayer shawl is what she touched. And the reason why she was made whole because those strings represent the power of God. So she grabbed a hold to the power of God. That's why he said many people are touching me, but somebody touched my strings. And they pulled the power of God from me. And so that's the reason why along throughout the Bible we will see that they followed the traditions of God. And so what happened was the world has based its calendar off of the Gregorian calendar. That's the calendar that we live in from January to December. But the God that we serve decided that he needed to base the calendar off of creation rather than the world system. And the reason why there is a Hebrew calendar, which is a God calendar uh, that's opposed to the American calendar or the Gregorian calendar is because the Lord said that my people were not familiar with the ability to stay in my perfect will. So what I have to do is I have to create the kind of calendar that keep them in a rotation of consecration because that is the only way to get them out of the, out of the rotation of curses. 
In other words, if God had not created this calendar, we would constantly be going in and out of the curses of the enemy. We would constantly be going in and out of wrong and right and wrong and right and blessings and poverty and blessings and poverty and blessings and poverty. And God said, because my will for my people is that they would always be blessed and that they would always be consecrated and that they would always be holy since they don't have the ability to do it. I'm going to create the kind of calendar that's going to tell them when they are to pray. It's going to tell them when they are to worship. It's going to tell them the days that they are to expect God to do certain things for them. And this, my brother, takes us out of the zone of wondering whether or not a prophet is prophesying truth to us. Because we don't have to depend upon emotions and what people think and all of what people are saying. We can go back and look at what the Lord has laid down and we know what God is saying for our lives. We don't have to fumble and wonder whether or not this is the season for me to be blessed. And you know, we have said that so many times. Touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor that this this is my season and we have prophesied foolishness in the house of God when in that season it wasn't the season to be blessed it was the season to get down in sackcloth and ashes but because we are going by an emotional system of the church and not by the calendar of God we have missed God so many times we have shouted when we should have been mourning we have travailed when we should have been rejoicing we have been defeated when we should have had the victory I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me we are still praying for stuff that's already ours. We are still asking God for stuff that he has already released. We are still asking God to take care of our enemies when it ain't even time. Uh -huh. God even have a time when he gonna even take care of your enemies. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh y'all sit down. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. So when you start looking at the calendar of God, <laughs> every single month, yeah, you're going to be able to sell this tape. Every single month, there is a different tribe that is represented. There is, watch this, there is a letter of the Hebrew alphabet that is significant to us. Watch this. And there is a part of the body that is supposed to be, that is supposed to be significant for that month. Somebody say, you teaching me something. Somebody say, you teaching me something. So watch this. The month of September is considered as the holiest month of the year. <laughs> oh, Jesus. The reason why it is the holiest month of the year is because the month of September is the month when God decides. Uh -huh. The month of September is the month when God decides who going to live and who going to die. The month of September is the day of atonement. The month of September is the month that God decides who going to be wealthy and who going to live in poverty. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And see, since you all didn't know that, now the Lord has sent me to tell you that the Lord has decided that he's getting ready to bless your life. The Lord, no, you don't hear what I'm saying to you. Because when you are without knowledge, then you miss the timing of God. He sends the prophet to tell you what is your season. In other words, this time is your season for you to stand rest and assure that what God is about to do, he's not going to lie. And he's not going to do that because somebody said it. He's going to do it because it was on the calendar. Which means in the house tonight, you have already received. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. You have already received everything that you've been asking God to do in your life. And no devil in hell is going to be able to stop it. I got a few people to rejoice right there because everybody don't believe that. Uh -huh. Oh, Jesus, everybody don't believe that. Uh -huh. Touch somebody. Touch somebody. Tell somebody. You sit next to a person that God done already decided. Uh -huh. See, people can't really understand that because watch this. They're looking for the manifestation and that's the wrong thing to do. When you look for the manifestation, you acting like a heathen because the people of God, they rejoice the minute they know that God has done it and they act like they already got it because they know that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. If he spoke it. 
somebody say all he got to do is speak it. Oh, y'all ain't saying that like you mean that. Tell somebody say all he got to do is speak it. Uh huh. And tell the Lord, the Lord, tell somebody the Lord done prophesied already. He done already spoken. We sitting over in October and God done already did it. We sitting over in October and the work of the Lord has already been done. Sit down, let me, let me, let me go through this, let me go through this, Jesus. The timing, the timing on the calendar, wait a minute, I got to walk through this, the timing on the calendar of God, wait a minute, wait, the timing on the calendar of God, so then we sit in the month, people of God, of October, so what is, what is the month of October. Okay, the first of all, we got to declare that the month of October, people of God, watch this. This is going to bless you so enough. Son, this is going to bless you so enough. The month of October is the month of Keshvan. C-H-E-S-H-B-A-N. Keshvan. It's the month of Keshvan. And the month of Keshvan, watch this, means the bitter month. The month of Keshvan means the bitter month. Now somebody said, well, why does it mean the bitter month? <laughs> the month of Keshvan for the people of God in this building tonight that is going to comprehend what the Spirit of God is trying to say. The month of Keshvan is the month of the bitter month because it is considered the month of the flood. This is the month that God flooded the earth. This is the month that the flood took place. The word Keshvan also means that this is the month, man of God, of the great drying up. The great drying up. In other words, this is the month that everything that's been in your way is going to dry up. No, you don't hear what I'm saying. No, no, no. This is the month that God is about to send the flood on everything and everybody that ever stood against you. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. This is the month that God is going to pronounce judgment on all of it. I'm not hearing no. Y'all better get up and start praising God. Because what you don't understand is that the flood is coming. But if you're in this place tonight, you get ready to go into the ark in the spirit and you shall be saved. See, we think, we think, we think this is called fall. We think this is the fall season. But there's a reason why the leaves dry up. There's a reason why the trees dry up. There's a reason why the plants dry up. They dry up because something new is about to take place. They dry up because they're getting out of the way of the old thing. And God is about to birth something new in you. Who am I talking to? Wait, 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 sit down, sit down. Sit down, let me just say this, sit down. Sit down. I got too far to go. I got too far to go. The flood. Oh, shout out the book, oh, Oh, Jesus. The flood. The flood. Head at Oshanda. The season for chaos. Woo, God, I hear you. The season for chaos all around you is ending before this month go out. God help mercy, Jesus. No, this ain't one need to buy them brothers on this. This is the Holy Ghost talking to you. Before this month is out, chaos is going to be erased from around you. Somebody better give God a shout out of your belly. Wait a minute, let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Hear this. Hear this. Hear this. Keshvan is the, is the month of, of bitter. But, but, but people of God, not only is it the month of bitter, not only is it the month of bitter, I want you to hear this. It's the month that when the children of Israel was in captivity for 70 years, Rachel was the one 
that comforted them and she took care of them. She was the one that carried and kept their spirits lifted while they were in captivity. But when they got ready to come out of captivity, the day they were supposed to go over into the promise and come out of captivity, Rachel gave birth to Benjamin and she died giving birth to Benjamin. And God said, this is the season that, listen, the reason why the warfare has been so crazy because what you are about to give birth to is about to sit you over in the promise and the enemy know that. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Somebody better say something here. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. It's supposed to feel like you about to die. It's about to feel like I can't take no more. You're supposed to be feeling like I'm about to have a breakdown. You're supposed to be feeling like I think I want to quit my ministry. I think I want to quit my church. But God said it's a death that's taking place. A death in your emotions. A death in everything that you think. Because what you are about to give birth to, it's about shoot you to another dimension somebody better shout tell somebody you supposed to feel this way I'm not hearing y'all say nothing I said tell your neighbor you supposed to feel this way tell your neighbor you on schedule if you feel like giving up you on schedule if you feel like you tired you on schedule if you feel like I can't preach no more you on schedule because the old is dying the old is dying because God is getting ready to put something 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 wait 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 a minute. I gotta give you the. <laughs> Ooh. 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 See, y'all, don't get confused. Don't get confused at everybody that's sitting around you. Because this right here is the kind of word that separates church people from people with an assignment. No, I don't think you hear what I'm saying. This right here separates church people from those that are the descendants of Israel, from those that have been adopted into the royal family for the assignment. And watch this, and watch this, and those that have been adopted, you're supposed to feel weary, weary this month. You're supposed to feel fatigued this month. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You should feel like I wanna cuss everybody out and just tear all of this up. You should feel like I want to walk out on my family. I want to, I'm sick of all of y'all. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because the Holy Ghost said you and your last labor pains are so covered higher. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Because any woman in here know right before it's time to push, you get crazy. You tell your husband, get away from me and don't judge me. I don't want you to touch me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But tonight, the Holy Ghost said it's because when you shout in here tonight, when I get through preaching, God gonna pop something out of your spirit. Who am I talking to? Let me do this. Oh, let me do this. Jesus. Y'all sit down for a second. I, can't, I got too far to go. I got too far to go. No, no, no. No, no, no. I got too far to go. Tell, tell somebody. Now tonight you can legitimately say, the Lord said it. Uh-huh. Tell, tell somebody, the Lord said this. No, no. Yeah. Come on. Now, now listen. Don't tell nobody dead. Because you got to tell a witness. You got to tell a witness. The Lord said this. The Lord said this. The Lord said this. And see, Noah had to walk around for 120 years and prophesy something that ain't nobody never seen before. Y'all hear me? Wait a minute. He was prophesying this going to rain. But let me help y'all with something. It had never rained before. Ain't nobody seen no rain. They didn't even know what rain was. But what the Lord told him is keep building. Keep building what I told you to build. Keep, keep your focus over here. Uh -huh. Don't look over there. Stay right here. Uh -huh. What I want you to do is keep your focus right here. What I want you to do is just keep your mind right here. Don't look at that. Don't look at that right there. Because all of that is getting ready to not be here. What I want you to know is if you take your focus off of what I told you to build, then you're going to be washed up with the rest of this stuff. I told 
told you to keep your eyes on what I told you to do. What did I? What did I tell? What did I tell you to do? Wait, wait, wait. He's oh, he preaching in here. What did I tell you to do? Well, well, Lord, it don't look like much. Uh -huh, he, he gave me a word for that too. It don't, it don't look like much. And he said, what I give you to do, it ain't supposed to look like much. Because if it looked like much, everybody would see it and want it. He said, but the much is in you. And when you touch it, I'm going to turn it into much. But to the eyes of everybody else that's looking, it's supposed to look like it ain't that much. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. I'm, I'm not hearing y'all say nothing. Because y'all got to twist it. You tell the Lord, yeah, Lord, it don't, it don't look like nothing. It don't look like much. It don't look like it's going to turn out. It don't look like I got enough money. It don't look like. He said, you just stick with the plane. Uh, you just stick with the plan. Because watch this. Watch this. Well, how do I know, prophetess, that this time I'm really coming out of this thing. And this is going to be what God said he was going to be. Okay. So then we don't, we don't have to prophesy. See, that's why I've been under. Because I told the Lord. I said, when you, when, when you start letting me preach this stuff, people are going to be like, well, what did she say? Let me just say this to you. How do I know that I can be guaranteed this time that this is not a superficial prophecy about the flood is coming and that the leaves are going to dry up? Because I want you to understand something. When Rachel died, Benjamin was born. But the same day that Rachel died and Benjamin was born, Methuselah died. Died. And Methuselah was 969 years old. Methuselah was the oldest man in the world. Methuselah was the person that was in charge of the earth realm as it speak, but he was also in charge of the family of Noah. Y'all ain't hearing me. Uh huh. Enoch was Methuselah's father, and Enoch didn't die. He just walked off with God. Uh huh. And so y'all ain't saying that. And so and so Noah's father was Lamech. He died at 777 years old. So when he died, Methuselah became the ruler over what God was saying to the people. But God didn't want to chance that because the Lord had a new order that was coming. And so the day that Rachel died, Methuselah died because God was saying, I'm wiping out the old order. And if I don't kill something, I cannot let the new people that's supposed to step in the order come to pass. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. In other words, what the Lord is saying is the oldest thing in your life that you feel like have controlled your life that have dominated your life it dies tonight I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me it dies tonight because the new order that's in your belly is about to come out somebody better give God a shout right now I didn't get nobody praise God right there Oh, I can't get nobody. Praise God. Whatever has been the spirit that have been there longer than anything else. That thing that torments you more than anything else. That thing that you prayed about and it will not break. The Holy Ghost said, tonight it dies. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Somebody better give God a shout. I can't, I can't get nobody. can't get nobody to say nothing right there. You ain't got to believe it. I didn't ask you to believe it. My job is not to make you believe it. My job is to say it. Oh, okay. No, 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 watch this. Watch this. It dies because, watch this, because the new order that was coming. Listen, God had to flood out an entire world. Listen to this. He had to flood out an entire world because the new world was not going to be put in an earth realm. It was going to be put in a man. Okay, I'm That's the reason why we're getting ready to see a lot of people having a lot of church, but they won't have the new order because the new order got to be put in people. And the only person that God is going to put the fresh anointing in and the new anointing in and the new vision in is people that he has chosen, that have sold out to him. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to 
me? That's why you're going to keep on looking on TV and they're going to keep on preaching the same old messages and preaching the same old thing and preaching a message that anybody in the pews can preach. There will not be any fresh revelation because what God is about to do in the end time, he's going to put it in a person. gonna put it in people and that's why you about to see little people become great men and women of God no you don't hear what I'm saying I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me you can let it see little preachers become oh y'all don't great men and women of God you can let it see the sister that used to dance on the back row she gonna now step forth with a ministry like you ain't never seen before I'm not giving y'all talk back to me because a new order is being downloaded in the earth realm tonight I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to show you, man of God. Lord, help me, Jesus. I'm going to show you what I'm saying is factual. Okay, let's look at this. Now watch this. Watch this and pay close attention to what I'm getting ready to say. And if you got to write it down, write it down, but watch this. The month of October is the month of the name of this month. It's called Keshvan. Now watch this. The name of this month, listen to me, is called Keshvan. Now, what does that mean to us in this building after I just gave the prophecy of the Lord? Keshvan, in the word Keshvan, the Jewish letters for Keshvan and how you spell it is Chet, Shin, and Nun, C-H-E-T, S-H-I-N-N-U-N, none. That's the word I want you to, that's the letter I want you to pay attention to. Okay, you're following me so far. None is the letter of the month. There's a letter of the month, there's a limb of the month, and there is a name of the month. So the name of the month is Chesvan, and the spelling of that name is Chechen Nun. And the letter of the month of October is none. N U N. None. None is the letter of the Messiah. Watch this. Watch this. None in a noun means heir to the throne. None in a verb means he reigns. <laughs> Cheshvan is the eighth month of God's calendar. Now just follow. Follow. The letter none is a letter that has a line and it has a hook on the bottom, almost like a J. It looks almost like a J. Now, you know, when you write on the English uh, letter paper, there's lines on the paper. So when you write the letter J, the hook has to stay on top of the line. Everybody say, I agree with that. Everybody say, I agree with that. The problem is that in this month of Keshvan, the, the letter written has a bend in it. Now the purpose for that bend is because the letter is written and it signifies all of the boundaries that are in the earth realm. The limitations that we cannot pass by. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying that. Uh, it represents the fact that we can come and get it from heaven. But when it gets so far, the enemy, because of the limitations of the earth realm, bends it. So we cannot go to the depths of where God wants us to go. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I wish I had somebody to go with me. How many people in here say, you know what? I know what you're talking about. I got them kind of limitations. Raise your hand if you're saying that. But what I want you to understand is this that the word Keshvan relates to the Messiah the Messiah Jesus Christ who's the one that rectifies he rectifies because in this month watch this watch this in this month 
It also represents the fact that the animal or the signal of this month is the scorpion, which translated in Hebrew is the snake that bites the heel of man. Are you hearing me? So the number, the prophetic number for the Messiah is 372. And the prophetic number of the snake is 372. Which says that when God gets ready to knock the snake and take the crook out. So that we can go to the depths of what he has called us to. Jesus is going to stand toe to toe with the snake in this month. He's going to be the one that's going to defend the fact that the snake has bitten our heel. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. It is the Messiah in this month that's going to get you the victory. I'm not hearing nobody. It is the Messiah that's going to defend and come against every spirit of deception in your life. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I know. Because some of y'all, some of y'all is looking like, like, what? What did you just say? I said, son, that that crook also represents Medina. That everything that the enemy, that hell, do you not know that the enemy has swallowed up some of your plans? And this would be the month that he would vomit. No, I'm not hearing you. You don't, you don't, you don't hear me. Can, can I ask you something? Can I ask you something tonight? And the way, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna see if I got a church in here. What happens when a person gets something that is on their stomach that they cannot tolerate? You take your finger and you stick it down your throat. And what's getting ready to happen is that the letter, the letter none has a crook in it. But Jesus is going to show up in this hour and he's gonna straighten it out. And when he straighten it out, it's going to be as if God has stuck his finger down the throat of the enemy and he's going to have to regurgitate everything that he swallowed that does not belong to him. God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Somebody better start hollering because I'm here to tell you that the devil is getting ready to vomit up your plan. He get ready to vomit up your vision. He get ready to give it back. God is making him spit it out. You can't swallow what doesn't belong to you. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You can't have what doesn't belong to you. Ooh, bah, 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 shake it back. Some of y'all ain't even praising God because you think what you're going through is normal. You think it's normal. But God came into this place to tell you tonight that the enemy can't have what the Lord has given you. And God is going to straighten it out. I'm not hearing you. The Messiah is going to straighten it out. You need not fight in this battle. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. The poison of the snake. Watch this. Listen. The venom of the snake. Listen at this. It's hot. The venom of the scorpion son is cold. Jesus is the only one that has the power to possess both temperatures. He is cold to the things of the world and he is hot to the things of God. So, to, so this is the month that he stands against two of the most poisonous spirits in the church. That's the spirit that bites at what God has called you to do. It's the spirit that bites at your character. It's the spirit that bites your heel to torment. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Because anybody know that when your heel get when your heel get injured, you can't walk in what God has told you to walk in. Because walking is heel toe. Heel toe. I'm not hearing y'all. So the thing that the enemy thought he was going to do to you, he is a liar. He would not be able to do it. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. Because God said the snake had to show his head this month the scorpion had to show his head this month because this was the month that the Lord would confront 
him. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I wish I had somebody that I wish I had somebody in here that said, Prophetess, I've been going through hell and I didn't know why. Because God said I had to make that demon surface. I had to make that spirit show out. I had to make it cut up so that I can confront that. Wait a minute, 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 because God knows the laws of the spirit, Father help me, and the laws of the spirit are fair, and the laws of the spirit, and watch this, the Bible said, having done all to stand, stand, because when Jesus went to the grave, that was the last time he laid down. In other words, he is a standing spirit that stands. He doesn't attack what is laying down. And so in other words, in order for God to deal with a spirit, it has to stand up. You don't hear me. Or else the spirit can decree that God fought unfairly. And that's the reason why during the season of the bitter month is the month that the enemy would stand up. It's the month that he would stand up to try to attack your finances. It's the month that he would stand up trying to attack vision. I'm not hearing y'all. It's the month that he would stand up trying to attack relationships and attack your children and attack your mind. And God is saying, you better not fall apart because I gotta use your body. I just want to use you so the enemy can stand up so I can see him and knock his head off. Who am I preaching to right now? You better not shake. You better not crumble. You better not cry. You better not talk about I'm having a breakdown. You getting a breakthrough right now. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. I just said something right there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. The Holy Ghost just said something to me. He said, everybody in here that have cried or stayed up at night in this month over anything, you got to reverse that action by giving God a praise right now. You got to reverse that action. Oh, my son, because if you don't reverse it, uh, what you are telling the devil uh, is that you are afraid of him. Uh, if you don't reverse it, uh, you are emasculating God. Uh, if you don't reverse it, uh, what you telling God uh, is that he's not able. Uh, he's not all powerful. He's not your battle axe. Uh, he's not your warrior. Who am I talking to? You better praise him uh, like you done lost your mind. Some of y'all just patty kicking God. I said praise him. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on a minute. When I said praise him. When I said praise him. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. The Bible said, God said that God spoke it once. And I heard it twice. That power belongs to God. The Lord revealed to me in a revelation that scripture. He said to me that that scripture what it means. That I spoke it once. And you all heard it twice. That power belongs to God. He said, but do you know what the twice is? And I said, no, Lord. He said, the first time y'all heard it, you got to believe it. And the second time you hear it, you got to obey it. If you can't obey it, you didn't hear it. I spoke it once, but you didn't hear it twice. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me because you believe, but you didn't respond. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. He said, in order for power to belong to me, in order for you to declare in the atmosphere that power belongs to me, you got to hear it and believe. It, uh, and then you got to respond to it uh, so let me help you with something all of y'all that's giving God a church praise uh, you ain't been through nothing uh, you don't even know what hell is uh, you don't even know what warfare is uh, I'm talking to the people uh, that said if it wasn't for a shame uh, I would blow my brains out uh, if it wasn't for a shame uh, I can't even tell you what I'm going through uh, that's who I'm talking to uh, because it's those people uh, that when you give God a radical praise uh, God is about to stand up uh, and the snake up uh, it's going to know uh, that he has met his match in the spirit. Uh, now I said, uh, give God a praise. Uh, everybody, uh, everybody, uh, everybody, everybody. Come out here. If you ain't never praised him before, if you 
ain't never praised him before. You better praise him now. You better praise him now. Because your praise is beckoning God. Your praise is summons in heaven. a second let me say one more thing let me say one more thing and this gonna help us all and we gonna know what we're dealing with we gonna know what we're dealing with sure enough now I got one more thing to say about this month see this is the month this is the month this is the month this is the month, is the month people of God this right here is also the month of a limb of the body. And, and, and watch this. In the month of September, it was the month, it was the month of the left arm. Because it was the month that the left arm would work the vision of the earth. And it is the reason why they would take the Teflon which is a little square box and a little square box that they would take the Teflon and with the right hand they would tie it on the left arm and they would tie it on the forehead and they would do this because it was the Teflon as they tied it with the right hand because it is noted throughout the sages and the rabbis that when a man that, oh, that is called of God lifts his right hand the right hand can see into heaven and when you lift your right hand it's, it's got vision that magnates to the right hand and so when you take the right hand down and you clap it with the left hand the head listen the left hand has an assignment from God to work the earth realm and that's the reason why some people's vision can't come to pass because they don't lift the right hand and they don't connect the right hand to the left hand and so therefore you're working the work and you're getting tired but you're not working the work of heaven because the right hand has no vision who am I talking to so from my own people of God when somebody tell you to raise your hand you got to lift both of them up because what you say in the God put the vision in my right hand so my left hand I know what to do I'm not hearing y'all lifting your hands is not religious lifting your hands is not church of God in Christ lifting your hands is not baptism lifting your hands is purpose when your mouth can't say nothing I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me when I lift my hands and I pull them down my hands have purpose I don't have to worry about whether or not I will succeed. I just lifted my hands in the presence. Wait, wait. So then, so then in this month, the the limb, Medina, in this month, the limb is the intestines. But what does the intestines got to do with anything? This month is the intestines. Watch this. And it's the intestines because the Lord said to the rabbis, in this month, I want you to bring me the fat of the intestines. I want you to bring me the thing that protects the inner lining of the digestive system. And I want you to put it on the altar. In other words, how much do you love me? Bring me the guts of your animal. He said, because this is the month of the spirit of smell. He said, because everybody keep tricking me with their praise. People keep tricking me with their lifestyle. Uh, the church doesn't learn how, how to look like they save and how to sing like they save. Y'all ain't hearing me. I don't hear nobody talk to me. They didn't learn how to dress holy. They didn't learn how to preach like they holy. They didn't learn how to, how, to, how to sing like they holy. And so God said, I got to take this thing and I got to transform it. Because watch this. The sense of smell, son, was the only sense that didn't violate God in the garden. Our touch was involved. Seeing was involved. Speaking was involved. Tasting was involved. Smell wasn't involved. Hearing it wasn't bought. And so God said the spirit of smell is still holy. The spirit of smell is still separated. And he said, I'm going to know that they mine. I'm going to smell them. When they start praising me, I'm going to know whether or not they didn't lay their guts on the altar to me. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm going to know whether or not that I got the inside. Who am I preaching to? I don't hear nobody talking to me. I hear the Lord saying, 
and uh, your smell got to satisfy me. Uh, not your praise only, uh, but what comes out of your gut, uh, what comes out of your belly, uh, what you willing to give up, uh, what you willing to ask God uh, to cut it out of me uh, and put it on the altar. That's how God's going to know who belongs to him. When I say, praise the Lord, you got hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. But there are some people in here that are saying, the trial I just went through, it kicked my guts out. Woo! That's a person that's got a different kind of praise. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. And I'm asking somebody in here, when you open up your mouth this time and praise God, I want to know, can he smell you? I want to know what the Lord smells on you. I want to know if he smells confusion. I want to know if he smells a double mind. I want to know if he smells a person that know how to praise him with your mouth. But watch this. It says this. Yes, Lord. He just brought this to my remembrance. It says that smell comes from the intestines. Uh -huh. Smell comes from the intestines. So when a person got a bad intestines, they have bad breath. And that's why people that's praising God that ain't cleaned out their intestines. They giving God praise, but they breath stinks to him. No, you don't hear me, y'all. Y'all ain't saying nothing on that. You go and thank you, Jesus. And God is closing his nose. I'm not hearing y'all. Because the junk that's in you, you have not cleaned it out. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. The junk that's in you, the unforgiveness and the bitterness, and all the mess that you got down in there, you haven't cleaned it out. So when you're giving praise, you spewing out bad odor in the house of the Lord. But is there anybody in here? tonight uh, that's saying God clean me out uh, because I gotta be able uh, to let you smell me uh, because you are my only defense uh, you are my battle axe uh, you are my warrior and without you I can't make it uh, without you I would perish uh, without you I would die somebody open up your mouth come out here this plane I'm a prophet and I've come in this place because God sent me here watch this and what you don't understand is that this is your last chance for God to fight for you because when you hear it and you don't respond to it you miss your opportunity for God to do what he say this ain't no church service do not get this twisted. This ain't just prophet is buying them. Coming in here. This is God sending me to tell somebody in here that all I need you to do is start shouting out of your belly because I'm going to straighten the line. I'm going to deal with the snake. I'm going to deal with deception. I'm going to come after the serpent that breaks your heel. I'm going to deal with with every controversial spirit I'm going to birth uh, something in you uh, in the midst of your darkness uh, in the midst of your trial I'm getting ready to throw you uh, over in the victory uh, somebody praise it praise it like it's your last chance he fighting for you. He fighting for you. Come out here. You 
gotta think about what you've been going through. Think about what you've been going through. Now watch this. Now watch this. Now I'm gonna show you something. It's the month. Now I'm gonna see how many people gonna really get this. Sister Medina, Dr. Medina, it's not just a month that God gonna deal with it. It's not just a month that Jesus gonna stand face to face with the snake. It's not just a month. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Not just a month that the flood is coming. Not just a month that he gonna give birth to it. But the final, the final gesture, woman of God, is this is also the month of the Messiah. And interpreted in the Hebrew, it means this is the month to leap away from it. This, this is the month that when the next time you praise God, God going to throw your spirit away from it. God going to throw you out of the devil's reach. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. The next time you praise him, God going to take you and throw your spirit out of the reach of the enemy. And the enemy going to be reaching for you. But you're going to be out of his reach because God is going to leap you away. Somebody! Here. Come on! Leap away! Leap away! Leap away! Leap away! He throwing you! Come on here, the enemy can't find you. The enemy won't be able to find you. He won't be able to locate you. You're going to a dimension that the enemy don't know about. Hell of Shia. Now after after you leap away, the final gesture that God says to make is to praise him because the Lord is going to cause you to forget it. God is getting ready to cause you to forget everything you've been through. He get y'all ain't hearing me. God is getting ready to cause you to forget the pain. He getting ready to cause you to forget all of the mess that you walk through because he getting ready to bless you. 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 You better praise him. You better praise him. You better praise him. He getting ready to bless you. He getting ready to bless you. He getting ready to bless you. what I'm saying I'm saying that the blessing that God is getting ready to drop now oh my shunda I felt that it's going to cause you to forget everything you ever been through but you got to praise him like you believe it you got to praise him tell you what month this was this was the month that the Holocaust took place this was the month that the enemy tried to wipe the Jews out and that's the reason why today they make up 20% of our population but 70% of our wealth because God said whatever the enemy tried to get rid of to multiply you better open up your mouth and give God a praise because somebody in here the devil thought he was gonna get rid of you the enemy thought he was gonna wipe you out and that's why God gave me the multiplier because when the devil came and thought he was gonna wipe 
be out. It didn't work. And God said, he's about to blow you up. You ain't going to have enough room in this church. This is your ground of blessing. This is your ground of blessing. This is where you're going to prosper. This is where you're going to multiply. Somebody give God a praise. once said that when you bear fruit on a tree and the fruit start getting too heavy you got to pluck the fruit and let it hit the ground because the tree is about to bear some more fruit I'm not hearing y'all and God said don't think it's strange that you had to let go of the other places because God said this is a tree that's about to blow up for you the Holy Ghost said that this is the original place that I sent you when I said go out because I'm going to bless you here and the Holy Ghost said that after I leave here this place is going to explode God said hold on a motion God said now is the time that he's about to explode it because the enemy tried to take you out before you do what God called you to do but God said this place represents the finishing work of Solomon and it shall be completed somebody give God a shout right now Watch this. This month, and I want everybody to hear this. I want everybody to hear this. This month is the month where the flood took place. Watch this. But everything that God was going to use, I love this saying, everything that God was going to use to do it again, he hid it for a season. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. See, you, you had to get sick for a season. Oh, bye, 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 bye. Because redemption is birthed in darkness. Y'all didn't hear me. Redemption is birthed in darkness. And a new dimension and a new assignment is birthed in death. Watch this. Watch this. This is the month that the rabbi said that everything on top has to look chaotic because the power of what God is going to do has to have a season to hibernate to its full strength. It cannot grow while people are messing with it. It cannot grow because if it grows while people can handle it, they'll mess with the leaves. They'll mess with some of the purpose. They'll misguide it. They'll send it in another direction that it has no business going in. So God said, what I have to do? I have to create chaos on top to give my perfect will a chance to grow in secret. Because when it stands back up, it's going to be what I called it to be. And it ain't going to need nobody to prophesy to it. It ain't going to need nobody to fix it. It ain't going to need nobody to tell it which way it should go. It ain't going to need no bishop to say, and I think you should do it this way. Because it's going to grow underground. So when it stands up, it's coming up out the ground like Godzilla. I don't know about yeah, 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 yeah. And anybody that know about Godzilla, when he came up, couldn't nobody do nothing with him. And when they thought they had killed him, he had already laid eggs somewhere else. I'm not hearing y'all talk back. When you come up, you're coming up with new children in you. When you're coming up, you're coming up with new sons in you. When you're coming up, you're coming up with new daughters. 
encouraging you so the next time the enemy uh, try to mess with you uh, you won't multiply uh, it's gonna be Medina's everywhere uh, it's gonna be Orange everywhere uh, I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me I'm not hearing y'all say nothing y'all better open up your mouth I said open up your mouth open up your mouth because you're being born again open up your mouth you're being birthed out again open up your mouth you're being transformed again let me say this give me strings There was a statement that I wrote on the plane. And the statement said, anything that can be done at any time by anybody will be done at no time by nobody. Anything that can be done by anybody at any time will be done by nobody at no time. Why? Because anything that God produces is done at a time by somebody. You don't hear me. 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 So the church, because we do not know this, because we don't understand this, because we don't understand that Tishrei was the most powerful month of the year. Because we did not understand that this is the year and the month and the month of September that the Jews go to the temple. And son, unlike us, I don't care how wealthy they are. I don't care how rich they are. During the Day of Atonement, which is the September the 14th, they go into the temple and they stand up in front of the whole congregation and they confess all of their sins. They confess everything that they did wrong. If they cheated on their wife, they tell it. You don't hear me. Because they realize that the Lord is deciding. <laughs> and the Lord is trying to decide right now who going to live and who going to die. Who going to be in poverty and who going to be in wealth. And the way the Lord decides in your favor is when you are honest with God, not perfect. I'm not hearing nobody talk back to me. And that's something that we negate in the body of Christ. That's something we do not push in the body of Christ. That the people of God are honest in the presence of God. But what we don't realize, that that was the month that we touch and agree because it was the month and the season just like now. That the Lord will say, and I will deal with your enemies. And that's the reason why Dr. Medina, when we were praying for God to do something about our enemies in July, nothing happened because it wasn't his timing. His timing to do something about the enemy is the month of September and October. And that's why this is the season that you agree with God and you will see it instantly. And I am a witness. I am a witness because this is the season that God annihilates people on your job that's been messing with you. This is the season that you come back to work and they've been fired. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me because God has said this is the season that I make my decisions. And I said, okay, God. He said, but also, I want you to realize this. This is the season. Hertz rent a car. Y'all know Hertz rent a car. Hertz rent a car is a Jewish man that lives in Colorado. They are Jewish family. Everything just about that you look at all over this world that's prosperous. The diamond mines, all the diamonds the Jews have it locked up. Y'all, y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying to you. And it's because they come into the temple during the month of October and September. And watch this. And the rabbi said that this is the season where God is making his decision. That you sow your mighty seeds. He said because what you get from November 
until next September is what you trusted the Lord with doing these two months. Now I know why the Jews prosper all year long without effort. I'm not hearing y'all. Now I know why the Jews are wealthy enough to go in their synagogues and study in the presence of God. They borrow y'all don't hear me. They're there for 10 and 12 hours and they don't have to work up because in September and October when they sold to God, he multiplied them because he knew their heart's desire was to study and lay out before him. And he granted that. He said, this is what you desire to do. Bishop, you desire to lay in my presence. Medina, you desire to seek my face. Then I must bring wealth so that you can do it as a job. So you can do it without ceasing. So you can get up in the morning and go into the library and study all day long. And you can leave the library and come to the church and lay in my presence because you have need of nothing. Because you understand my principles. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm telling you, and let me help you with something that's getting ready to happen for you when I leave here. Because I am authorized to prophesy. The prophet is authorized to go back and make an announcement and decree. The prophet is authorized to do that. I used to play with my calling. And when I say play, it's because I did not have the full understanding of what I had been called to do. But now that I know this calling, and the Lord has taught me this calling in secret, he has allowed me to understand that the month of September, people of God, is the month of contracts. This is the season for contracts. This is the season when the enemy has told you no, that you will go back and apply again. I know what I'm talking about when God spoke to me and he said to me, I want you to pay attention to this calendar. And I said, yes. He showed me, Dr. Medina, in the month of September, he said, here it is right here. He said, this is the month of contracts. This is the month, this is the reason why the Jews give like they give. Because every contract that I'm going to say yes to is based upon the seed that they give. And Orin, I tried the Lord. And I said, yes, Father. I said, I believe you. He said, do you believe me? I said, I believe you. He said, well, then this is what the Jews do. He said, they do not come out of the month of September and October with full bank accounts. They don't do that. And let me tell you, in one week, I had given over $40,000 to the church. And I kept giving and kept giving and kept giving. And people were saying, what are you doing? And I told my staff, I said, I can't pay you because I got to give everything I got. I got to give everything I got because I'm going to try this thing. And I'm here to tell you that during my transition, my credit score was down to a 500 and something. And I was trying to get it worked out. And I was trying to fix it. And after I started giving like that, I was driving down the street and my phone vibrated. And it was a lady on the phone. And she said, Dr. Bynum, you don't know me. She said, but there were some people that was trying to help you with your credit. And I said, yes. She said, well, let me tell you something. Those people were crooks. And she said that when I told them that I wasn't going to work with them anymore because I had all the connections to TransUnion and all of these places, and this is my business. She said, I gave them back all of the contracts. And when I handed them back to them, I looked down and saw your name. And God told me, not this one. He said, put, put this one on your lap because this one right here was the woman of God. She said, and I came to tell you that in less than 30 days, everything on your credit be wiped off. I stand in this building right now with over 750 credit score on every last one of my credit bills because I understand timing. Because I understand God's timing. Now wait a minute and it don't stop there. It don't stop there. I couldn't get a red nickel in my name. Though I was making money, I couldn't get nothing. And watch this in one week, I got approved for $2.2 million to buy my new house. And the very next week, I got approved for $1.5 million to buy the building that I'm in. I said, God, what is going on? He said, because this is contract season. He said, this is the season where every door is open. He said, and the believers don't know that. Black folk are shouting in church. Pentecostal folk are shouting in church. But they don't even know the right season. Just so I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I'm not hearing nobody say nothing. 
said, God, every door, everything that was shut, it opened like you wouldn't believe. In a matter of weeks, uh, you, you, you don't hear me. In a matter of weeks, I was like, God, am I dreaming? He said, no, this is the lifestyle of the Jews. This is the calendar. This is the calendar of God. This is how they live. So every Friday, Every Friday for the last eight or nine months, I don't care where I preach, I bring my whole communion table and I set the table in my hotel room and I light the holy candles of Shabbat and I have holy communion in the presence of the Lord. And when I'm not preaching, I shut down and I don't work and I lay in the presence of God because he invites me to his holy day. And for me to rest in his holy day from 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. Saturday, I say to the Lord, I trust you for my provision. I trust you enough to lay down and not work and give this time to you. I trust you enough. That if I have to perform a mitzvah, M-I-T-V-A-H, if I have to go and help somebody, if I have to do what I'm doing tonight, this is a mitzvah. He permits me to preach because whenever you have to do a life-saving, a life-saving eventful thing to save somebody's life, he doesn't count it as working. He counts it as a favor to heaven. I'm not hearing you talk to me. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. And he said, the church can keep on shouting. And you can keep on doing it the way you've been doing it. But if we would sit in this building and tell the truth, feels like we're going around in circles. It feels like everything that we're looking at, we done seen this before. Okay, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. Like when the choir sing, I don't, almost like we didn't heard this before. We turn on television, and we look at Christian television like, when one program go off and another one come on, it's like, didn't I just see that? Didn't I just see them same robes? Did somebody else just get through preaching that same thing? Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? And yet, we do not see the real prosperity of the believer because we're out of timing. We're trying to serve God on the world's calendar. Did I just say something? We're trying to serve God on the world's calendar. Somebody's, I'm going to give you a perfect example. Somebody right now is saying, I'm going to give you a perfect example. I just feel like we should go on a 21-day fast starting Monday. When you don't fast this month, there is no holidays, no sanctification days on the calendar of God this month. You don't, you don't fast during this month, period. Why? Why? Because this is the month that the Lord takes care of Satan. You don't do anything. <laughs> Fasting means these kind come out by much fasting and praying. This is not the season for that. 
This is not the season for them to come out. This is the season for them to show themselves. And this is the season for you to be still and for you to do nothing but worship. This is not the season that you bind the enemy because you can't bind him while the Lord is trying to bind him. You cannot confront him while God is confronting him. God, I wish I had somebody to say something right there. I'm not, oh God, I love the Lord tonight. Come on here somebody, how many, how many people learning something? This is the month that you just praise him. This is the month that you said, God, I know you got me. This is the month that you said, Lord, I know you got this. God, I know you got this. I know you got this. This is the month that you bless him. You bless him for what you don't have. Because guess what? Whatever it is you don't have, it's because the enemy done got it tied up. And God is taking it out of his hands. This is the month that you praise God. Because your praise in him says, I trust you. is the month of divine trust divine trust divine trust this is the month that you tell God I don't care what it looks like I trust you I don't care what they do to me I trust you I don't care what my landlord say I trust you This is the month that God wants to see who will go down for him. He wants to see, watch this, because some of y'all getting healed. He wants to see who would say, if I got to go to a shelter, I know you got a purpose for it. If they come and get my car, I know you got a purpose for it. Come on here, somebody. Come on here, somebody. I need somebody to worship him right there. I need somebody to work. God, if I can't pay my tuition, I know you got a purpose for it. Because whatever you allow, I trust your decision. I'm not hearing about to talk back to me. Y'all better come on here and worship God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This is the month for divine trust. This is the month for divine trust. This is the month for divine trust. Divine trust. When I say divine trust, I mean... It's a trust that he's pouring out on you. It's a trust that you don't naturally possess. But if you lift your hands up tonight, he'll give it to you. It's a trust that'll make you look at your friends when they say to you, what you gonna do? And you gonna say, God got me. This is the month that you look at your friends and this is the month that the blessing in your life is these words Lord I don't know what to do you don't know what a blessing that is <laughs> you don't know you don't know the blessing and I just want somebody in here to bless the Lord by saying Lord I don't know what I'm going to do I don't know which way to turn. I don't know how to work this out. But I trust you. I trust you. He got you. He got you. That's what it is. Let me just walk back here. That's what it is. It's divine trust. It's divine trust. And this time, people of God, you ain't gotta, you ain't gotta believe me. It's on his calendar. It's the oldest calendar in the world. It's on his calendar. You ain't gotta trust me. You ain't gotta say, well, is this Dr. Bonham saying this? No, ma'am. This was written years and years ago. This was written when, when, when creation came into existence. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? 
This is something that you can be confident in because I've seen it happen. Because we've seen a world that lives by it. We've seen a people that walk by it. And because we are not Jewish, but our roots in Christianity is. And this is the reason why people, I know and I don't care if I got to stand in the kingdom by myself. If I have to stand in this kingdom by myself, I am willing to go down in history saying that we will never see the benefit of the kingdom of God until we, we connect with our Jewish roots until we become a friend of Israel until we understand that the Bible said that the salvation that we will get we will get it from the Jews I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me until we start referencing God on his holy day even if you can't take off from your job uh, come on somebody at 6 p.m. on Friday you stop talking junk I can't talk on the phone to you. I can't gossip. I can't talk about no mess. I gotta keep my spirit in a posture that this is the holy day of God. And he said, if I reference it, he will bless my life. I will never want for nothing. That's the scripture. Y'all better read the book of Deuteronomy. That is my day. And if you keep it holy, holy in your mind, I will prosper your way. I will make ways out of no way. I will bring wealth in your household your cupboard shall never run dry and we just having church like a bunch of heathens we done took salvation from Jesus the Jew and we done ran off with our tambourines and our shouting and our tongues and we've left every godly principle that Jesus stood for behind and that's why we are an emotional people with no progress but the Jews they don't speak in tongues they have more than what we will ever have. They reverence God. They reverence the prayer shawls. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? The shofar, the shofar on the Day of Atonement was supposed to be blown over 120 times. Calling in every promise that God said. Reminding heaven that he has prophesied over us. And that this year, everything he said must come to pass. When we sit down and we eat the bread. We eat the bread on the holy day. It says, blessed are you, O God. The king of the universe. Who provides for me from the ends of the earth. Who makes provision for me. Who causes the earth to yield her bread to me? Who causes the water to bring her bread back to me? And when I eat this and digest it, the word of the Lord, which is the bread of life, when it connects with this bread, the word of the Lord shall prophesy to my inner man, and I shall walk in strength and be strong. And I shall be able to speak those things out of my mouth that is in my belly. And because they are your words, they shall come to pass. And as I raise this cup of communion, it represents the prophet of Elijah and all that he has prophesied down through the generations and no prophecy spoken over my life shall not come to pass. And as I drink it, the wine shall represent the newness and the refreshing of my spirit. The wine shall represent the awakening of every prophecy that you've ever spoken over my life. When I wash my hands, blessed are you, O oh God, who sanctifies me from the end of the earth and causes me to wash my hands, that as I serve you, that which I touch will be holy and clean. Blessed are you, O oh God, when I light the candles. Blessed are you, O oh God, who sanctifies me with your commandments and who command me to light the candles of Shabbat. The candles of 
that I may see eternal light. The candles that my eyes shall have envisioned. Eternity and the revelation of your plan for my life. That I shall not be sideswiped by the enemy. But my eyes shall be open from the inner man. And I shall be able to see into heaven. That I may prophesy what is in heaven down into the earth realm. And I bless you this day for your holy day. And I enter into it. And the enemy is not allowed to be in this day. Because you call it holy. Therefore I am holy. You in this place, you've been called to the new order. That's why you won't think like other people. When everybody else tell my, and I'm, I'm, and I'm just giving my go on me a 21 day, you're going to say, sit down somewhere. God is doing this. You don't even know what you're talking about. Sit down. Sit down now. Be still. This is the month to be still. This ain't the month to pretend to be holy. This ain't... This is, y'all ain't saying that. This ain't the month for long, 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 long hours of travail. This is the month for pure worship. Because worship says, my confidence is in who's working for me. My confidence is in this, that the Jesus that I serve is straightening the line out. Straightening the line out. He's straightening things out for me. Mother, in this month, he's, straight, he's straightening the line. And by the time the end of the month come, I'm going to be able to go into the depths and get what he has for me. Watch this, with no warfare. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This is what he means when he say the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Because there is a battle that the Messiah fights every year. And he conquers every demon that is going to try to conquer you before you get into the new year. And that's why when we come out of this month, we don't war. When we come out of this month, watch this, our travail is to snatch others out of the fire, not ourselves. My travail is because I'm wailing for those who can't get out. I'm not wailing over my bills. I'm not wailing over my issue. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Because I know that I made it through October. One thing I do know, he got a time and a season when he going to do it. It's already done. Y'all ain't saying, he did it in October. That's what you tell the devil when he trying to show his head. Get out of my face. God has already whipped you over in October. He already stood face to face with every lying and deceiving spirit. That's why in this building tonight, I preach this message in my church and I spoke the word of the Lord and I was hearing from God and God spoke to me he said I prophesied and told you five years that you would do this and at the end of the five years it would be over and I stood up and told my church we are no longer church wherever you want to go to church you can I'm going to 5 a.m. prayer because y'all season is up. This is what God told me to do. I'm doing 5 a.m. prayer on Sunday mornings. We are not a church. That season is over. Whatever you didn't get, you didn't get it. Because now, I got to go into prayer for the world. And I got to go into prayer that we would be connected back to our roots so that we won't miss the timing of God, so we won't be busy having church for a God that we do not know. We 
would be busy having conferences for God whose principles we don't even know nothing about. We don't even know what month we in. We don't even know what our pro we ain't got to wait for nobody saying, thus said the Holy Ghost. When you read the calendar of God, it postures you for the whole month. You say, I know what I'm supposed to think this month. <laughs> I know what I'm supposed to stand in. And that's why when I saw that, everybody around me thought I was crazy. The testimony that I got coming when the press release goes out on the 21st of this month. It's going to make your jaws drop. And my staff said, we're going to get out of your way. Because you done showed us something. I said, I done told y'all. I'm going to stand on this thing that God is saying. And the reason why I'm going to stand on it. Now watch this. Because I've ran out of space in the earth realm. And if God going to fulfill his promise in some of y'all lives, you're going to have to get on another calendar. Okay, I'm not getting nobody to say nothing. Jesus, have mercy. I just said something. In other words, because of your family, because of your background, because of where you come from, you've already been ruled out of this society. I'm not getting nobody. And if the promises of God is going to come to pass, you better get on God's calendar where the time is called mercy. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. I said I'm on God's calendar. And now I'm going to give with the Jews. And I'm going to eat that matzo soup. And them noodles. And them carrots and that chicken. On the day of atonement. And I'm going to do all of it. And I'll come back and tell you that it don't work. But in less than three weeks, I saw it break. And it's been breaking ever since. This is how you become the head and not the tail. Now you done heard people shout about it, but this is where you become the head and not the tail. This month, this month, people of God. He said the month of the Messiah, the number of the Messiah is the number 50. I minister like this in my church. I tell the people when I do something and I tell you what God is saying in the spirit and I tell you what God is saying give it ain't because I thought of that in my mind it's because this is what the Jews is giving in this month come on now and that's why they own the diamond mines and that's why they own 70% of the wealth of America are y'all hearing that? and they make up 20% of the population. They are the smallest population in the world and have the greatest wealth. You go figure. You go figure. Which says, God don't need a whole lot of people to take over a nation. Man of God, he don't need a whole lot of people. And I did it. And I stepped out on God. And I gave every dime I had. Do you hear me, sister? Every penny I had. And I kept looking at my bank accounts until the only thing that was left in all nine was a dollar. And I said, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to try him. Because I'm on God's schedule. And I saw the Lord. Stuff that people wasn't even supposed to do for me. Jesus have mercy. That's why I read the scripture in the book of Genesis when I first got up and said this one. It was the prophecy that Noah's father spoke over his life when he said, and this one shall be the one that will bring me relief. And I speak the word of the Lord in this place. And every person in this building that received this word tonight, what God is about to bring forth in your life after this night, 
this one will be the one that will bring you relief. I heard about three people say, thank you, Jesus. I don't think you heard what I said. The vision and the prophecy that the enemy has tried to destroy and kill. The door wouldn't open. The school opportunity wouldn't open. The job opportunity wouldn't open. Every door you knocked on seemed like it was shut. I'm here to tell you right now when I don't shake, it shall open. Okay. I can't get nobody to, I can't get nobody to receive that. I said there's a door being divinely opened for you right now because tonight the Lord has put you on his calendar. Now I need you to come over here and give God worship. Come on, give him worship. Things that are held up. I just left Kansas City preaching for four days. I laid hands on everybody in the building. And at the end of the meeting, the Lord said to me, don't touch a dime. Just go home. And I did. I left there and went to Michigan. And I preached in Michigan for two days. And while I was there, I kept telling people everywhere I go, once you hear this word, your spirit had been shifted on the Lord's calendar. And now that which was closed cannot stay closed. Because now you are a descendant of a Jew. <laughs> you don't understand that. <laughs> and nothing is shut up for them. I'm preaching the first night. The first night in Michigan. And I spoke the word. The next morning the pastor called me. He woke me up. He said, a man has been owing me money for years. Never paid me. He said, today, prophet is by him. He called me and said, come and get $20,000 of your money. And I'm going to start paying you every week. He said, I, I'm just shocked. And I said to him, the minute you got on God's calendar, it's not poor. God's calendar is not struggling. A building that I've been paying $8,000 a month to rent. I will now have that building for nothing because two of the tenants that's got businesses in the building will be paying more than enough for the rent with money left over. Because when God say it's transfer and I receive this word, when he looks at my spirit, not at my skin. When he looks at my spirit, he sees Israel. Okay. I said something. When he looked at Lisa, the way that I emptied out my bank account, he saw Israel. When he looked at when I raced to the hotel to light them candles and to take that communion, he sees Israel observing the Sabbath day and keeping it holy. When he see me going and reading what he's saying about me for the month and how am I to conduct myself, he sees Israel and he promised Israel 
that you will be the apple of my eye and I will always provide for you and you shall have the wealth of the land. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? Did anybody in this building tonight, did anybody in this building tonight get your eyes open? I said, did anybody in this building tonight get your eyes open? We are not Jews. But you better find yourself studying the Jewish calendar. You better find yourself knowing when is Rosh Hashanah, when is Passover, when is the days that you spread out the bitter herbs and the fruit. The bitter herbs reminded me of the Egypt that we used to be in my life. The fruit and the nuts reminded me that nobody in my family would be left out. Nobody would be left in Egypt. The shank reminded me that I'm getting ready to eat the good of the land. Passover reminded me that when they came and the death angel came through, the blood was over my doorposts. And the Lord wouldn't let the enemy put my vision to death. Are y'all hearing this? We better wake up. We better wake up and stop all this dumbness. We better wake up because the church has been wandering in Egypt. We've been wandering in Egypt, wandering from conference to conference, wandering from over here to over there, wandering from Texas to California, wandering from St. Louis to Michigan, running here, running there. And now all of a sudden, everybody's looking around and they say, Where, where's the church and where's everybody? And where is righteousness? And where is, where is holiness? Because God is saying that the righteousness and the holiness of the religious institution was not built to last. His way is the only way that is eternal. Because it replicates heaven. The way he has designed for us to live, it replicates heaven, which means as we live this way in the earth realm, when we get to heaven, our spirits and souls will not be foreign to how we are to conduct ourselves in a heavenly place. How can you live like a heathen down here and understand heaven when you get there? That will be done on earth as it is. In and in this building and everywhere that he permits me to go because I don't go a lot of places around here and preach because he said don't cast your pearls before swine don't give that which is holy to dogs don't give that which is holy to ooh what any bottom is coming ooh everyone's going to see problems ooh. no I'm not her no more. I don't get high on that stuff. That's a system that is working for nobody. That's a system, man of God, that's working for nobody. That's preachers that don't even want to be pastors. But they can't let go of their lifestyle. So they stuck because they didn't make nothing else out of their life. And so in order for them to survive, they're going to have to be refreshed in a holy place. And they're going to have to go and do like me and be refreshed with revelation so that I can see that it's bigger than what I've been doing. It's bigger than a conference. It's bigger than 68,000 people in a Georgia Dome. It's God calling me to help turn the world because Jesus is soon to come. That's an element that we're forgetting. He's soon to come. He's coming for a remnant. And that's why wherever I go, 
I don't beg. I don't plead. And when the Holy Ghost said walk out, they tell you I walk out. Because I don't need nothing from people. He is my source. And they will tell you, I give till I have nothing. And that's when I fall back on God with my eyes closed like a person falling into a, into a lump of pillows. And I say, you got me now. Whew. Because I don't ever want to get to the place where I don't need Jesus. And in this place, when I speak the word of the Lord, it is him. When I speak the word of the Lord, it's according to his calendar. You have missed September, which is a month of contracts. But you can retrieve it. Just like God declared that Hezekiah would die and he turned his face to the wall and the Lord added years to his life. You have missed it, but it can be retrieved. And how God allowed Israel to retrieve things, 